Hello, beautiful soul. I'm Vicki Howie of ChakraBoosters.com, the creator of Chakra Boosters Healing Tattoos. And today we've got your astrology energy forecast for April 2022. And I'm here with Tiffany Harlick. Yay! I gotta be careful, I shake the whole table when I do that. You know I love to clap. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany, uh, I'm so glad to have you here again. It's always fun. Thanks for joining us. Yes, absolutely. I'm excited to talk about April with you guys. Okay, I feel like so many people know you because you've done this for us for a while now, but let me do a quick bio for people who don't know. And the most important thing is to know that there are links below to connect with Tiffany, okay, at wiseskiescollective.com where she does all kinds of metaphysical counseling. She's got a great background in, um, what is your, tell me again, it's your, your actual degree. What's that in? I have a, a master's in health psychology. In health psychology. And mm -hmm. then in the background, there's a lot of psychic. There's a psychic lineage in her family. She's mm -hmm. Russian, but she hails from Texas. And she loves Mother Nature, keeps bees, and does all kinds of wonderful, great things. She's got a publishing company called Spellbound Publishers or Publishing. And mm -hmm. there, she also does cookbooks for really delicious, healthy food. And uh, anyway, check out the links below. Uh, there's also a calendar, like a, a, it's, an, it's an app for getting the aspects of the month. So as you hear us talking about the different dates here in the astrology, you can actually have that show up for you daily on your phone or your computer by using this app. So check out the links below for Tiffany. And Tiffany, I am so excited for April. <laughs> you, I know in the yearly that we did, you guys check out the yearly if you haven't, the 2022 uh, report or forecast and April was like the shiniest. February had a lot of good stuff, but April was like the whoo. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. So I know we all need a little dose of good news and the astrology is a great place to find it. You know, it helps us anchor into something. And so uh, there's a lot of, of nice points to anchor into. Of course, any weather forecast is going to have some storms. So we'll talk about where to expect those so that we're not surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but April, uh, I would say the theme is, uh, is a little mysterious, right? The theme that I'm sharing is we don't know what we don't know. So there's a little bit of a fool card, a little bit of uh, innocence, a little bit of hope, you know, a little bit of uh, naivety, but not, it's like childlike wonder, you know, there's lots of um, good things that can come of that. So what we don't know what we don't know. There's a lot of mystery ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, there's a lot of positive points to anchor into. And so planting the seeds of hope is going to be really important here in April. Okay. So I also feel like the secondary theme is planting seeds of hope or holding out for hope, because I know you said it had a really positive energy. And sometimes when I feel into, I don't know what I don't know, or I know a couple worry wart friends that are more worry wart <laughs> than me that would say, oh no, I don't know what I don't know. And they might think that that's kind of negative. And I know that you've put out such a positive, like probable, <laughs> vibe. Yeah, probable positive vibe for this month. So I really want that to be on the t-shirt as well too, that it's really got... <laughs> a chance for us to, I don't know, I got the sense of, we did it a while ago, 2022 forecast, mm -hmm. but I feel like a sense of like wings spreading, like the sense of potentialities expanding. Um, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the other thing I think about is when we, we don't know what we don't know. It's like, here's this, here's this dot, right? This is everything, you know, right here. And then <laughs> here's the, here's what you think you don't know right yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And here's what you don't know. You don't know. Right. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm coming up with that. Like there's okay. a lot. And so if we can just stay open to the mystery and open to the, the seeds of hope, I think you're going to have a beautiful month. Yeah. Um, of course the astrology hits everybody differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's talk about it. Let's, let's get into it. You know, the reason that I feel like this month was going to be one of the best months of the year is that Jupiter is going to conjunct Neptune. And so that's our big signature theme. 
um, we're going to go into the dailies and go through the month two, but the big signature theme is releasing here in April. It's one of the biggest astrological moments of the year, and it happens to be positive. We've been through a couple of years here where all the biggest astrological moments have been gong crashes, right? Very difficult Saturn square Uranus, like all of these big crazy ones. And it's not that there aren't other um, large transits happening, but this one has two of the bigger planets, right? Jupiter and Neptune, they come together every 12 years. I and was so going to ask because they're slow moving, right? Because they're mm -hmm. out there. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Every 12 years, every 12 years, which means that in some ways we're starting a new 12 year cycle. Um, the way I first interpreted this was a, a change in culture. Um, we talked a little bit about this in the, the 2022 overview where it's like, when did the 70s music mm -hmm. turn into the 80s? Mm -hmm. When did the 80s music turn into the 90s? And that those are the types of things that are happening. I can't point it out and say, well, that song is what we will remember the next 12 years for. But some artist somewhere is picking up on a higher vibe. You know, you guys that are creatively inclined, uh, that are trendsetters, that are uh, muses, something's moving through you that at the collective level, you know, and we're going to look back and be like, wow, that was the style. That was the vibe. Mm -hmm. um, so cultural themes are in the media. Um, you know, the Jupiter magnifies. Uh, Neptune is the unknown. So we're there's a magnification of uh, things feeling mysterious, things feeling, um, you know, very curious, right? So stay curious is another way to look at this month. Um, this, this is a, when this happens mid month, there's Saturn is going to sextile the sun. Uh, this is the best possible case to create big magic, Jupiter, big Neptune magic in Pisces, right? Where they both like to be. Uh, what's, what's interesting is that um, it's, it's in 23 degrees of Pisces where fixed star Markab, Markab, M-A-R-K-A-B, is going to be, and that is not a good star. The fixed stars are, are like, they're, this one is not good. Almost it really like the little gremlin or something off to the <laughs> side, right? Right. <laughs> not the beautiful so, parade. <laughs> right, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. It's like, here, it's Mardi Gras, like, what's up under the mask? I don't know, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to point that out. Um, now, uh, at the beginning of the month, we do have a really fresh start energy. First of all, the numerology shifts into a one, right? Um, a one month and a six year. On the very first day of the month, we get a new moon in Aries, the sign of new beginnings. So we get oh, all, we get like three new, one energy. New, new, new. Like, right. Yeah. So oh. very fresh, uh, very much focused, you know, if you think about the, the number one, you can, you can tend to have like blinders on, which can be helpful when you're trying to focus in on a project. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe the first is a great, great day to do a house blessing. If you like to freshen up your um, address numerology, you can work that type of magic. If you're into the new moon wishes, it's going to be in uh, 11 degrees of Aries. So two more ones, right? Like mm -hmm. lots of one magic on April 1st, Crazy. right? And so wherever you want a fresh start, this is a great window for that. Uh, hobbies, habits, um, hygiene, uh, all kinds of things, you know, new places to live, new um, ideas with work, new uh, freshen up in the partnership, like all kinds of ways to activate that newness, welcoming new experiences, new perspectives, uh, things like this. So that's the first. Now we have, we have two bumps that I'm going to point out, and one of them is towards the first week. So on April 4th, Mars is going to conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. And this one is kind of a red flag for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want everybody to be aware of it. So Mars comes in early. So you might see it as early as the first, but it will release by the fourth. So if you feel it building, 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 just know that on the fourth, it's going to, things are going to pivot. It's going to be okay. Uh, Mars uh, pierces and energizes and is um, bloody, right? Like Mars, rah, rah. It's the warrior for sure. <laughs> the warrior energy, and it's next to Saturn that cuts, right? That limits, mm -hmm. that is clear with boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like boundaries are going to be pushed. Um, it's in Aquarius, so because we have this airborne disease that has been part of our culture now for a while, I feel like. 
there might be a spike in that, right? Mars spikes and things. Uh, so I just wouldn't pick this as a time to travel. I wouldn't pick it as a time to pressure luck. Uh, if you are a person who has experienced invasions or, um, you know, boundary or border issues with yourself, that's something to be aware of looking at those patterns and those cycles. Um, where, where have you maybe not been as clear as you could be? Uh, it, it, I'm not, I don't want to scare anybody, but that's what the weather looks like, right? It looks like something is very piercing. There's a penetrating, a invasive. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe in the world politics, we might see a little more of that. That's, or, yes, that's exactly where. Too? Can it go the other way and, and someone takes back a border or, or is this all about the the aggressive energy of Mars. No, I, actually, I really like that you brought that up because I hadn't thought about that angle. But yes, it definitely could be, you know, Mars takes what's Mars is, right? <laughs> so, it could be someone suddenly coming up in that Mars energy and saying, these are my boundaries or... And that, that's the history. I mean, not to get too deep into it. I recently watched uh, Winter on Fire, I think it is, in um, Netflix. And it's about when... Um, Ukrainian people took their borders back, right? And it was very powerful. They waited 93 days downtown in the cold and they said no, you know, and on the 93rd day, they got it back mm -hmm. there. So that is a, a, a nice way of looking at that, right? Enough is enough with Mars and Saturn, right? Somebody has had enough. Mm -hmm. um, so we can expect to see that. Okay. Um, on the fifth, it's great. So I'm like, don't worry, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna <laughs> release then promise on the fifth venus is going to enter hotel pisces venus is exalted in pisces <laughs> wants to be in pisces I imagine. <laughs> right and this is the complete opposite energy it's a softer approach it's a, a, a treaty it's a compromise it's a balance it's a altruistic it's the most altruistic you know it's venus on her best behavior and yeah. um, pisces best being the 12th um sign right versus the 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 aries or even mars energy both being the first of everything the young the kind of mm -hmm. immature energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting right. contrast between those two days so we're going to expect a pretty big maybe feeling of a shift there Mm -hmm. And that's why it's like really important if you don't like the weather to wait a little bit because it'll change, you know, that's the emotional weather, right, too. So right. Uh, Venus is going to be in Pisces April 5th through May 2nd. So a uh, pretty long shot. And because I practice evolutionary astrology, I'm always going to see the high vibes and the low vibes of anything. So even though this is Venus in Pisces is awesome and amazing, if you if you're a person that has issues, people pleasing, and you're overdoing it in that department, it might not feel so great, but you can be aware of that. Like you can be aware of, am I trying to overgive in a situation here that I can't do anything about? Uh, could I light a candle instead of donate $5,000? You know what I mean? Is there somewhere in between here? And <laughs> what's the most altruistic? Thing? That one just hit me. Okay. <laughs> I got you. You know, like what's the best thing for all involved? What's most in alignment with, um, you know, my highest good, but everybody's highest good, right? <laughs> and also when you said it's going to be there for almost a month, I'm kind of like, well, also pace yourself, right? <laughs> it's like, just yeah. know it's going to be here for a month if you start feeling really like this Venus energy in relations just really wants to give and be more altruistic and everything. Just know you, you're going to be here for a month. <laughs> right. <laughs> so spread it out. <laughs> right, right. Spreading the love out over time. Um, okay, so behind that is our second road bump. Mercury is going to square Pluto on April t April 10th. Uh, that to me feels like misrepresentation. You know, that feels like um, we're not really sure what's going on here. We don't really have all the details. Uh, something is changing and transforming. It just feels like caution lies, probably misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. Not like Mercury, when Mercury is aspected poorly, especially with Pluto, you mm -hmm. don't want to travel. Like that's not the right day to be on the road if you can help it. It's not the right day to be in the air if you can help it. Um, let some time pass because it, it it's just not ideal. That's all. It's just not ideal. And maybe some communication power struggles. For sure. Yes. Uh, Pluto rules the government too. So you could get some news, like some governmental news. Okay. Um, it can be shocking. It can be controversial. But you know what? controversial shocking news can be really really good too like one of my friends this morning i'm sorry i'm not up on the new mexico news but she said uh that new, the new mexico um i don't know who it is but they uh made all of their public school systems free so they're they're 
um, colleges. Oh, all their, oh, okay, higher education. Yeah, I was like, huh? So I'm gonna have to look into that. Don't take me, you know, don't take me for- <laughs> Yeah, it's still, it's still just word of mouth right now. We're still right. just going along. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't look into it, but that's, that's an example of how shocking, interesting news that's transformative can be challenging and good, right? Like what if you were that senior that just graduated and you've got a bunch of debt and that new person's coming in <laughs> on a free ride? Like you want them to have a free ride, but you also don't want to like, like what happened. <laughs> right. That's you don't funny. Want to, and that's why I was mentioning that because Pluto rules like those governmental systems. I feel like a big theme to notice is what you're bargaining. What what are you what's up for bargaining. That is what's dissolving all the way through 2027. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most important messages to understand through all of this. It's like, where's the bargain here? And what bargain am I not going to be a part of anymore? What's the bargain? What do you mean? Like the bargain? Is it what do I want? Like, just can you be a little clearer? Like, yeah, there's so many bargains. Am I trading love for money? Am I living in a situation I don't want to live oh, in? Okay. Like, what's the exchange? What am I exchanging here? Yes. for something else? What am I yes. getting up to get? Is that right? What yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and to really so, examine that, what am I giving up to get? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. W if I was free from this, what would I be free for? Okay. Right. Yeah. And so I feel like this is a moment in the month where we're going to get those, those big hits of, well, I'm just not into that deal anymore. <laughs> right. Uh, so just notice that, right? Mm -hmm. Notice what deals are broken. Bonds made and broken is another big theme, right? You know, for that, for this moment, okay. Mercury squaring Pluto on the 10th. Mm -hmm. uh, right after that, again, if it gets bad, just wait, because the very next day on the 11th, Mercury is going to enter Taurus. It's going to be in Taurus April 11th through May 10th, right? About a month. Mm -hmm. uh, Taurus, very practical down to earth, conservative. If you're like, what do I do with my money, Tiffany? Be conservative, be thoughtful, think about it over time. Don't make a decision in the now. There's no truth in the now. Just let your thoughts ride it out. And so uh, Mercury and Taurus is great, right? Especially for people like me who are so fast and want to do things quickly. Uh, it helps us slow down and analyze. It can feel frustrated because you're like, can't we just all get on board and go? No, we can't right now. We need to think it through slowly and we need to think about it over time, right? It's like in yin yoga. You can't just get into the pose and relax. <laughs> you get into the pose. It takes away the meaning of the yin yoga. I got it. <laughs> right? Like you, you get there and you wait the four minutes and you breathe the whole time and you don't move, right? That's Mercury and Taurus. Got it. Uh, the bad side of Mercury and Taurus is being very bullheaded. So if you find mm. uh, you're, you're bumping up against some stubborn attitudes, uh, if you're being stubborn, you know, there's a, a moment to check in about that. Okay. Uh, Taurus, right? What do I need to feel safe and secure? What did I need from the other person or the situation to feel safe and secure? And how can I provide that on the inside, right? Mm. Mm. And how can I provide that on the inside? Mm -hmm. I wanted to repeat that so that part doesn't get lost because that's really big. Because it's not out there. <laughs> it's an illusion. It's and, all in here. And it shows up out there, but it really needs to exist here. Because if it doesn't exist here, you can't see it or receive it from out there or create it or however you want to put it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't get to engage with it if it isn't happening in here mm -hmm. in some way. So. Yes, right? Um, this is the point in the month on the 12th when Jupiter conjuncts Neptune, the big culture changer, the okay. big uh, magnification of magic. Um, Jupiter conjunct Neptune can be very powerful for the arts. It can also be very powerful if you are trying to escape something, you know, so be careful if you're uh, with people that have addictive personalities or are in trouble with themselves. Uh, this can be a time when people really do want to check out. Um, this can be a time when they check out by moving, right? By fleeing their country, by relocating. It's not all escaping is bad, right? Like that's how my family, you know, arrived. Like you escape a bad situation and find a better one. Yeah. So Jupiter conjunct Neptune is not something to be scared of, but it is that great unknown. When I have a bad day, I think about my great grandfather who got on an icy boat in Russia mm -hmm. in a wooden ship for months and came over, you oh, know? No. <laughs> not knowing anything it has to be that bad for somebody to take that kind of leap of faith right mm -hmm. and i'm not trying to focus on world politics I, that's in your own life wherever you are watching yeah. right what what icy wooden boat are you about to get on you know 
Like, <laughs> what are you ready to leave behind and start a new 12 years, beautiful 12 year cycle? Mm. Um, what pat what 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 pattern of that type are you completely done with so much so that you're willing to really invest in the new in what the new thing's going to be mm -hmm. or even if it's unknown mm -hmm. right is what you seem to be saying what i'm saying like the unknown is better unknown there's just an intention not that <laughs> not what was <laughs> right. I'll, get on the boat, I'll get on the boat and i'll weather whatever the shark whatever. <laughs> the bad food and the seasickness <laughs> And you know that generation, like there, yeah. I don't. I, there was no complaints. There was, no, um, you they, know what I mean. Was, <laughs> now, Tiffany, you hear young young people get on the plane and complain because the Wi-Fi on the plane isn't working. Very right. Well. Never yeah. mind. We won't go down that road. But it is perspective is important, isn't it? And maybe once in a while we're losing it this day these days, right? You know. <laughs> I wrote, I don't, if you'd like to link it for people, you can, but I wrote a whole article about Jupiter conjunct Neptune and okay. gratitude. And okay. so the, the theme with that was as you think, right, as you think, as you're thankful, so yes. shall you be. And so gratitude is a big part of working this uh, awesome. transit. We'll share that. Okay. Remind me, we'll share that. Okay, sure. You bet. So uh, let's see behind that we've got on the 15th of April, we've got Mars entering Pisces. So Venus is in Pisces. Now Mars is, is right beside her. And so Venus and Pisces, yay. Mars and Pisces, boo. <laughs> Mars, it's like it's almost like Mars has to approach Venus differently. Like, mm -hmm. like he's coming to Venus's house or, you know, it's not her house. I know because, mm -hmm. you know, Venus's house would be like Taurus, but Pisces, like you said, very exalted, exalted there, yeah. feminine in a spiritual way, which is so strong on the planet right now. So super feminine. And it's like, he has to come into that. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if, you know, if, if the signs are almost evolving like we are, you know, the planets and the signs, like they're almost more able to move because I notice we're able to move more. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, can Mars now be a little more flexible of coming into Pisces or something? <laughs> right, and that's evolutionary astrology, like yeah. observing what's changed with the, that type of behavior. Mm -hmm. Mars, Mars wants to go for it, but Pisces encourages an indirectness. So sometimes you can see passive aggressive behavior. Sometimes you can see a uh, covert narcissism. Sometimes you Mars can... is in Pisces, you're saying. Yeah. Oh, got yeah. It. That aggression still trying to come through, but it can't come through in its normal, straightforward ways. Got it. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it feels like false leadership. It feels like somebody doing this and being like, I, I know the way, but they don't know the way. Yeah. And so you, you can pick up on that. Right. And so there's this, like, something is not adding up here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, just being careful and working with things that, that are indirect. How can you work with indirect things positively? I love learning indirectly. I love putting on a podcast and going for a walk. That mm -hmm. is not sitting in a lecture, taking notes, understanding, asking questions. It's very indirect. I'm just getting a hit of my podcast while I'm out enjoying nature. You know what I mean? So that is another way that you could work with that harsh energy well, right? Um, so let's see, the very next day, the 16th, we've got our full moon at 26 degrees of Libra, right? So this is the polar uh, opposite of our new moon in Aries on the first. We've got our full moon in Libra, the sign of partnership, balance, harmony, um, things coming full circle, things coming clo to closure. Mm -hmm. um, feeling a need for more reciprocity, equality, um, that trying to be fair, you know, like what's really fair. Heart uh, chakra all the way for Libra. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Balancing the skills of your own heart. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and on the 20th, the sun is going to enter Taurus. So that's good. Mercury and Taurus, Mercury and the sun will both be in Taurus by the 20th. So if you have a uh, Taurus birthdays, you know, be aware of sending them their happy birthday gifts or notes or whatever. Um, Taurus is very loyal and dependent. And uh, again, on the good side, on the negative side, it's that stubborn side that I'm not budging, right? Um, there's lots to work with when the sun is in Taurus. It's It feels like good garden energy. It feels like good um, earthy Stevie Nicks energy that we were talking about on 2022. Yeah. Uh, it'll just, it'll be there through May 21st. Right. 
Okay. Uh, and then two more things to talk about in April. On the 29th, Mercury will enter Gemini at the same time Pluto will retrograde. This is not a red flag. Pluto retrogrades for about five months every year. Uh, I feel like because we have so many pop culture astrologers now uh, that sometimes these, oh my God, Pluto retrograde. It's like, what? Yeah. And we're going to have Sunday this week again. <laughs> Exactly. You know what I mean? It's going to be some sunshine and some rain. You know, it's like it's going to be. <laughs> right. And so if you want to work with Pluto retrograde, you can. Mercury in Gemini is awesome. It's chatty. It's intellectual. It's learning things. It's that spark of something new. It's taking online classes. It's working out the details. It's writing your business plan. It's right. It's going back to the bylaws of your beekeeping club, which is what I'm working on. Right. It's all of the the details and a fresh new life about it. It's the social butterfly. It's bouncing around. Uh, it, it's making small connections, little bites, just tidbits of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but with intelligence, with an intelligence, because sometimes when we say social butterfly, it almost seems like it's, you know, floaty, but it actually has, it's good thinking energy. Mm -hmm. as well, so yes perfect and i'm looking at okay so pluto will retrograde in capricorn on that day as well so pluto in capricorn personal power personal worth um you know helping people to remember that the power is inside of themselves over this five month period so if you want to look for themes or patterns in your life i listed a couple of dates for us so pluto retrograde cycles for clues and patterns uh in 2020 2021 and 2022 go from April to October. All of them have been in Capricorn. So if you're like, oh yeah, I did have something going on those months. Uh, that's, you know, a little pattern. It's, this is how we connect the cosmic dots. That's how we learn astrology. And it's how we learn the pattern of our own self, you know, our individuality. Um, so neat. And last but not least, depending on what time zone you're in on the 30th or the first, all right, we get a new moon, which happens to be a solar eclipse in 10 degrees of Taurus. Uh, it's conjunct Uranus. So it's going to be something that feels very um, exciting, fresh, new, unearthing, uh, really changing things up. Mm. I would say it's hard because at one side I'm saying like be very conservative, be very practical. And on the other side, I'm saying change things up, start something well, new. Yeah. So depending on where you are, it's like, what have you thought about for a really long time that you don't need to think about anymore? You mm. know you want to paint that wall black, right? Mm -hmm. And it is shocking and different and disturbing, but you've thought about it for a long time. So by the end of the month, it's time to change it up. Yeah, um, that's a really good way to put it. So you're just saying like, you know, things that you've really, you know, you, you're not being irresponsible about it. You're not like the minute it comes in, just going with it. This is stuff that's here and it might surprise you, but if you check, it's still here. So just go with it. If it's like and it can as be wild it can as it be, may be if it's still here after a long time this might be its time right right that's it and it's like i'm justifying this uh table that i want to get <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm glad <laughs> and the price keeps yeah. going up and i'm like when do i uh, yeah when do i jump in there pretty soon oh. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. That's that is the bulk of what you can expect for the energy forecast for April. Lots of good surprises throughout the month. Uh, the two things to worry or not worry. The two things to well, mention. Best and worst day. Best and worst. Yeah. Most challenging day and day that things might just go the most smoothly and easily. So to me, the challenging is going to be mostly on April 3rd or 4th. Okay. So depending on your time zone, April 3rd and 4th, that's when I feel like it's going to be enough is enough. Like <laughs> you know, that's when everybody's going to come look for your forecast. I bet you're going to have all these hits on that day because people are going to be feeling it out there. Uh -huh. um, people are going to decide if they're going to get on the boat or not or what. Right. Yeah. yeah. Case of the screw it's like I, anything but this, right? Anything uh, but this. It's a good motivator. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be. And uh, in the best days, I'm looking at April 27th and 28th. I didn't go over this in the forecast, but mm -hmm. April 27th and 28th, it's right before the eclipse. Uh, it is Venus is going to conjunct Neptune. Mercury is going to try and Pluto. Uh, and then, um, yeah, Venus will conjunct Jupiter on the 30th. So right around the 27th and 28th, there's a sweet spot for money, uh, for love, for uh, giving something a whirl, you know, just giving it a shot, just having that fool card energy that like childlike wonder, I just want to, right? 
um, I had early in business, you, you mentioned my cookbooks, right? So one of my first things that I did as a young little entrepreneur was write a gajillion cookbooks. And one of the um, guys that helped me get started, he said, you know, Tiffany's not going to fail because she doesn't know that failure is an option, which is a blessing, right? It's a privilege to have that mentality. Uh, but it was true. I had, I was like, well, of course I'm going to do that. Like, that's exactly what I'm in. And it wasn't from a place of entitlement, but it is that full card energy of, I just want to, right? It's, I'm just going to do it. You're it not doesn't even have to, to hang be it on anything else. You're not trying yeah. to hang on a result. You're just, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So yeah. What, whatever that thing is that you just want to do because you just want to do it, if you can, right? Then around the 27th, 28th, even through the 30th, that's the best time. That's like the okay. sweet spot where the rough waters have settled and it just feels like there's your moment. You know, you've been waiting for it. You want it's been in the cart and you're ready to click by. <laughs> <laughs> you're still trying to go for that table. Yeah, my table. <laughs> I know you are. I can feel it. Okay, do you have your cards to give us? I a have my cards. Yeah. Yeah, because right. you know, I was a little surprised, just a little bit, because you were like so pro. But there's there's some real mixture. It almost feels a little like when we were talking about March. There's positive here in April, but there's feels like there's some mixture too. Of there's just two blips, right? It's like a heartbeat, like look. Uh, and it's not going to last the whole month. It's just going to be a moment. Yeah. Um, but the rest of it, to me, it's like, wow, let's just stay in and stay curious, stay in wonderment. Um, mm -hmm. Let things come to you, flowing to you and through you. Mm -hmm. What are you? Free? And it could be bigger. What you were saying earlier, I just want to say to anyone, it, it feels like it could be bigger than you thought. Could be yeah. better than you thought. Right. Exactly. Yeah, because when I know for me, I just know. I just can visualize even a couple people that I know. If if I kind of tell them, if I kind of say, um, you know, I don't know what I don't know. I I really like that. It's kind of fun. It's kind of it swims through. But they can be kind of like, uh oh. <laughs> so I'm bringing in that energy of April that I know that you just it felt very like. And that's mm -hmm. what you were saying when you went for the analogy is you could look just at this or it could be this or it could even be this. Like it's it could be something bigger than you can even see. Mm -hmm. So that I'm I'm excited to see what that is. <laughs> what fell what? out, Tiff? What fell out? Let's okay, three okay. things. Three Let's things that we don't want. I'm gonna put them back. Yeah. The four of pentacles, the tower card, and the nine of wands. So this yeah. is the question of overdoing it. What's whatever hasn't been built on a solid foundation. Just, uh, you just said, you said only like take action. If it's been with you for a while and you're really clear on it, mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah. have that. Right. Nope. And, who, and who's working harder is another thing that comes in. It's like, what, where are the green lights? Right. Okay. Like, so look, we'll take those. We hadn't asked for the month yet. So we'll just take that as an overall caution. Somebody <laughs> needed to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. well, we needed to hear that guys. And it was a reiteration of what Tiff said before, which is, you know, um, go with what you've already been doing, already knowing. It, that part doesn't have to be spontaneous. The acting on it or the opportunities around it could be spontaneous. But you will know the thing. The thing will be familiar because you felt into it. Yes. Okay, so let's get a card for the first half of the month of April 2022. Okay, that's more like it. <laughs> so did, uh, queen of swords and so this queen of swords is very uh surrounded by rain bows and astral beings and uh planetary support right the yeah. queen of swords is about truth it's about clarity um and it's about focus right yeah, so again it's that one energy so we're starting out at the beginning of the month but it's got the feminine energy that's going to come in with venus pisces you know like because that's all going to be coming off in the first part of the month, correct? Is that right? Yeah, yes, exactly. Like so very well me, done. Almost like a great, that's like the perfect example of that very, very one Mars go start energy, which is the swords. But the queen brings in the, as those feminine energies come in with Venus and with Pisces. So. And really like, as you're saying that there's not much tolerance for what doesn't work, right? Okay. Yeah, so that, and that, that keeps coming up. That's a theme that keeps coming up. You keep saying, well, what would put me on the boat, right? Like, <laughs> you guys, when this happens over and over again, I really want you to pay attention, okay? So the, the theme that keeps showing up over and over here is what's no longer? What do you know can no longer be tolerated? <laughs> right. And it's just the truth of it, right? It's yeah. just the truth of it. There's no yeah. fault. It's just the truth of just the mechanics. Time to move on. 
Yep. Okay. So now for the second half, I'm just asking for clarity and guidance for the second half of the month here. Interesting. So we get the Knight of Swords. So uh, two swords, right? Two swords, one a little bit more responsible, uh, another that's on a quest and doesn't really know what they're questing for, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's that magnification of the unknown, uh, this willing to put yourself out there, uh, this willing to say what needs to be said, even if it's uncomfortable, um, this ability to just um, stand for your own power, stand for your own life, stand for what you want, right? Like there's a youthfulness to this and there's a power to this. And so um, letting yourself off the hook, putting yourself on the hook, saying, I'm going to be accountable. I want that table, <laughs> right? You know, whatever it is. <laughs> so, so do you, um, did we have something with Mercury and Pluto? We had something because was that's that? Where, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, that's what's coming back for me when I look at that a little mm. bit. That, that Mercury has got that mercurial travel energy, that move that go forward. The Pluto, Pluto's got the unknown, the transformation, the power, and something mm -hmm. in the, 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 that whole card, the way it looks. And like you said, you're on a journey. It just made mm -hmm. me feel that for some reason. A journey, and it's in, into, the, into the unknown. I'm just ready to ride. You know, mm -hmm. the sun's up. I want to get up an hour early so that I can live that extra hour, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's to me that another, I guess it's a very energizing combo that does surprise me. Um, yeah, there's, to me, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's like, it feels like uh, swords, it does have a masculine energy, but it's a very feminine, strong card. And then the other one's very masculine card. And again, weather changing and who knows? And like you said, exactly. So yeah, that's that feels good. That feels it right. It can feel like that eclipse too, right? That eclipse yeah, right absolutely. at the end of the month, it can be awesome. like, wow. Uh, there's something that's being illuminated that's now true for me that I've gotten clear on, right? Like uh, all of that goes into. So I was using the Star Tarot, guys, and it's a really cool deck. Mm, uh, cool. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that one star in the middle, like lighting up on camera and everything. <laughs> ah, well, thank you so much, Tim. You're so welcome. That uh, was fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. It's more mysterious than I expected April to be. And I, what, I don't know why I should be expecting anything else. Everything's been mysterious anymore. Right? Yeah. In a big, huge unknown. Mm -hmm. It was like ever since all the COVID stuff and everything. So, mm -hmm. um, but it feels like it's a benevolent unknown with this, especially with the Neptune Jupiter conjunction. And uh, how long did you say that lasts? Well, I mean, the conjunction itself won't be that long. It's what yes, is exactly starting is the, the new, yes, the exact conjunction will be on April 12th. Okay. And, uh, the, and it ignites or initiates a 12 year cycle. Okay. Right? And it's not often that they land in Pisces. So you're going to see a lot of astrologers getting super excited about it being in Pisces. And what I'm saying is watch out because there's a fixed star that's very curious on the other side of that. So uh, I don't know, you know, if you think about like the 90s music and like the grunge music, mm -hmm. right? Like there's a, a pain to it, right? Mm -hmm. There's a pain to the art. There's mm -hmm. a, um, a, a side of it that's like really touches people at that um Frayed nerve, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get um, it. Mm -hmm. Right. So we'll see. We'll see what you artists come up with. I can't wait. You're change makers. You're changing the world through your art, through your cooking, through your gardening, through your writing and your dancing and all of the things that that you got you artists do. It's beautiful to watch and it's important, right? And it's mm -hmm. like it's proof of soul growth, right? You're so settling back into that in April so much back into my screenplay writing and actually this month beginning my acting again, just to have fun with it. Just play, yes. You know? Yeah. So yay. And you keep thinking about that table and we'll check in with you <laughs> next time around. <laughs> right. Guys for being with us. Uh, we hope that you had as much fun as we did. Please leave any comments below. If I see any questions I can't answer all, I'll get Tiffany over here to answer them for you. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Much love. Thank you.